Uh, Wayne Frank could open to end that Cards chance. Cards looking for home field advantage. They need to win in the Diamondback loss. And the ground ball to short. We got an out. Top three. Bases loaded for Lenny Harris. We love Lenny Harris. On the ground. Pujols is at first in this one. They're out of a jam. Let's go to the fourth. Sweet the Wayne fourth. Franklin. Going nuts here. Matt Stairs. Oh, yeah. That's a web gem. Buck dial in here. Here's Andy Bettis against Ryan Christensen. Yeah, good job, Buck. Anyway, great throwing catch. <laughs> I'm here for you guys. Go ahead. Don't worry. Five shutout innings. Edgar Renteria, two on, still scoreless. Substance, not style, boys. Step Go out ahead. of the car, sir. That's ripped, and it's a fair ball. Rolling and two hole score. Carton has got a two nothing lead. Woo. I tell you, a lot of people don't realize the top of the year the Renteria has had this year. Not a whole lot of place to pitch him, and he's swinging the bat well. Look where this pitch is. A lot of guys are taught that's where you throw the baseball, but he stays inside the baseball and. Doesn't try to pull it, doesn't roll it over. He's been a clutch hitter all year from them. Big two out hitter. First and third, Edmonds swing, and it is through the hole. Cardinals go up three zip. Interesting, that bat right there, he set him up with a fastball. He swung through it, missed, got the same pitch, got the base hit. That's what veteran hitters will do. And this is a bullpen that has closed the deal. Rick Weiss, Keith Ginter, game's over. Season over for the Brewers. St. Louis meets Arizona on Tuesday. In Arizona, the final score here, four to nothing. For those of you wondering, and Jose Hernandez did not set the strikeout record. He didn't play. Rowan had a couple more hits anyway. What has been a final and very emphatic two weeks of the season. Little concern over Bennis' right knee. He's had problems with it before. Arusa has said Morris goes in game one, Finley in game two. No word in the game three starter. First ever 100 loss season. And Matty, who's starting to hit a little bit, drives it in the left and scores Junior Spivey, one zip Diamondbacks early on. Later in the first, they're up two zip, base is still loaded. Chad Moeller had himself a huge game. Here he slaps a single in the left. You see Grace come around. He's going to get, oh, hold on. Uh-oh, now it's Matt Williams. Shoo, I'm in the wrong rundown. <laughs> He'd eventually get tagged out to end the inning. But you never want to see Williams in this situation here, Buck, do you? No, I don't think, especially this time of year, when you ask an athlete to start and stop, you're asking for some trouble there. Well, especially with all the injuries he's having in that ankle area, just go ahead and take the out right there. Meantime, the pitcher's John Patterson. Patterson's a nice little athlete, but watch this. Kaplan, that's the difference between the National League and the American League. <laughs> Gabe, that's cold, man, that's cold. Here's Tony Womack. Ding dong, Kapler going back. He says, I can top that. Oh, an upgrade. Great defense. D-back still leads three zip. Juan Pierre's at the plate in the top of the third. Patterson, and you don't want to go there. The lead is now three to one. Potentially, you might see Patterson start a postseason game for the D-back. He's got great stuff. I mean, electric. The, fans, the breaking ball he can throw, nice. What got into Chad Moeller's bat? First home run of the year. He had six RBIs. Getting close to that postseason roster time. They're getting ready to announce and making some last-minute auditions. Well, they take a look at John Patterson here. I'll tell you what, Harold talked about electric stuff has the plus-plus curveball. You don't see many pure curveballs anymore. You can't look for both pitches. You got to make up your mind one way or the other. We bring in Kurt Schilling in the relief. He will not start until Thursday. This is his throw day. Brent Butler, ouch, babe. High heart in history. And Carl, the key to that is his 0-2 count. And you don't see Kurt Schilling give that up that often. I, I, I know it was his work day, trying to get a little, get a little extra work in. I was surprised to see him in the ball game, but. I don't know if that was Schilling's decision or the manager's, but they ran him out there and got his work in. Well, he got some work. Diamondbacks got the win. They do get home fields. Kurt Schilling, 6-3-2 ERA in his last four outings during the telecast on ESPN2. Sutcliffe thought that he had seen Schilling tipping his pitches in his last couple of outings. It was 20th of the season for the fourth time against the Giants. Goodwin, left center. This guy can vote it. I see so many guys take bad angles to the balls there instead of cutting across and trying to, you know, so many times you go back, look at the angles outfielders take, that's where the mistake's made. Martinez, that's fair, down the line and left. Goodwin scores easily after his triple. Goodwin had a huge hit on Saturday as well, 1-0 Giants. He's back up. What are we seeing from Tom Goodwin here? Oswald. He, he changed it, you know, he started hitting Barry Bonds' group. He's got a little jab step now, seeing the ball a little bit longer. Uh, you know, also I was going for that 20th win. It just didn't work out for him. This guy, you know, Martinez, tag, throw, double play, inning over. Now in the fifth, Jensen. 
Boy, Ryan Jensen, way to go. Five innings, no runs, five hits, three Ks, and a 7 nothing win. 13 wins for him. He's going to get some Rookie of the Year votes. Jason Jennings going to get a lot, too, for the Rockies. Oswald fails in his fourth try to get to 20. Giants finish 25-8 and eight over their final 33, and they have won eight in a row. So we mentioned how the Dodgers hung in there. How about the season Barry Barn fell? Didn't see 70, didn't see 60, but three, two on. Ching Feng Chen flies out right field. Say that again. Ching Feng Chen out number two. He was 0 for 4. Joe Thurston tags from second, goes to third. Perez, Dave Ross. And we're starting to see Perez dial in. Seven Ks in the game. Two men left on base. It's one zip. Bottom eight, Clay Condry against Ching Fang Chen. On a breaking ball. Two down. Condry, Dave Ross. Bases loaded. Bochi. This team nearly lost 100 games I know. this year. This is a team that everybody talked about the prospects and what they have. They still got a great future ahead of them, but it was a tough year for Bruce and, Bruce and those guys. Yeah, they remember, too, they're playing out in the West where you got Arizona and San Francisco both winning over 90 games. Somebody's going to get beat up out there pretty good. Padres take care of the Dodgers by a score of 2 to nothing, And again, a lot of offers up there. Cusco 0 for 4. For the Los Angeles Dodgers, a lot of names that you're not used to seeing play for them. How about Ron, who was the leadoff guy? We saw him hit a ground ball to third and nearly beat it out. Looked like he Garrett Anderson, Ishmael Valdez, swinging a drive. Darren Erstad is on. He comes in to score. Angels finishing in a flurry. They're up one zip here. Next batter, Brad Fulmer. May play a big role in the postseason. Good bat from that side. He comes up, singles to right. Base is loaded. Ishmael Valdez scuffling. Remember that short porch in Yankee Stadium? That lefty can snap a couple. The long way to... Right center at Yankee Stadium, a long way at this ballpark as well. That's a grand slam. Doesn't matter. Troy can go out of Yellowstone if he catches one. That's 30th. That's a big park, Howard. Yellowstone's a big park. Yeah. Willie Bloomquist against Schoenweiss up the middle. Dan Wilson and Cirillo score. 6-2, Angels. 7-2 now. Bloomquist. Uh, here's a guy who went to Arizona State. He was a short st uh, second baseman. He played all over the field. Had an injury early in the minor leagues. And now he's up in the big leagues. And the Mariners got right big plans for this young man. They do with, what, four hits? Three RBIs in this game. Davis, Al Levine, yard work. Three-run shot, 7-6 Angels. That was Ben Davis, pinch hitting. Top eight, two on for Ichiro. Mark Lukachevitz on the mound, and he would go down fishing. Angels still up by one. Top of the ninth, why not bring Bloomquist back up? Sean Figgins, he made the postseason roster with a great diving play there. Saved the base hit. You know, everybody's talking about making the postseason roster. If you don't know who's on your postseason by now, don't you think you're you're missing it, Mike? Yeah, I think they pretty much had it decided, but they don't want to announce it at this point. I think they'll all know soon after the game. Francisco Rodriguez, that young 20-year-old pitcher, is going to be on the postseason roster. No Dennis Cook. You also see uh, no Al Levine for the Anaheim Angels. Who win it by a score of 7-6, to six, but they're now set to head to Yankee Stadium. Take no shot at getting home field through the postseason. But in the top of the second, tied at one, Hattieburg. Mike Young. Oh, pretty play at second. He gets the out at first. Still 1-1. Rangers have played a lot of close games the last month. Bottom three, three one A's. One on, one out. Barry Zito, Ruben Rivera. Stuck in an elevator, pressing buttons, and just going nowhere. That's one of those you're going first movement. You saw how Zito looked at him, picked him up, and got the ball to the first base and real quick. A-Rod. Not a lot on it. Zito fields. Six innings, an earned run, four Ks. He'll pitch game three of the division series against the Twins. the only time I have not seen Alex run a ball out. Miguel That's Tejada. The first time ever. Down the right field line. Fair ball. Durham scores. That's the 131st RBI for Tejada, 4-1-A, still top four, loaded, oral out, Jermaine Dye, out, 24th home run of the year, 8-1-A's, like a huge weight coming crashing down on the bridge of your nose. You know, everybody says pitch down, pitch down, pitch down. How many of these home runs do we see are actually down where guys get extended? Punch! Uh, That's getting out there, off Jeff Tam. That might be his last homer as a Ranger. Could very well be. Calmero liking it, Punch got 19. Curtain call, maybe an adios. Bottom nine, eight five A's, two on, two down. A Rod, who joined us on baseball tonight, Sunday, 12:30 Eastern time, talked about his MVP candidacy. Said, if I win it, it's everything. If I don't, it means nothing. 142 RBIs in the season for the shortstop. Kevin Mensch, Koch, see you in the bigs.
<laughs> How do pitchers point at pop ups? Like someone's going to look at them and say, you know, those pitchers when balls are popped up, they all point at it. Have you had a Jackson, that's, that's great teaching because a ball in the middle of the infield, they always point. Uh, let me ask you, use the second baseman. Did you ever look at a pitcher to, to see where the ball was? I didn't think so. Go ahead, Carl. Chavez had a couple of RBIs. Fox <laughs> Twins. Big hurt. Big strikeout. Eric Milton pitched a good game. Meantime, Jock Jones exit stage. No, off the baggie, but he went three for three, Harold, and boosted an average to 300 for the season. Yeah, but big news, Jock Jones' ankle is better. That was a big question mark, and Milton pitched real well. Those are things that the Twins had to see today. Here's a little tapper by Willie Harris. Getting on that. Coming home with him, Mankiewicz. Ha! He's umpire pretty much in his face there, wouldn't he? Wednesday up one zip, some nice D. Bottom eight, tied at one. Mike Porzio, Bobby Kelty. Just leaving. Twins go up three to one. They're going to start Kelty on the bench in the postseason, but he is a good hitter. 12 home runs. Curtain look, call. Look at that crowd in the Metrodome. That's what Barry Zito's going to be looking at. He's going to start game three of the division series, which means game one in Minnesota. Now it's J.C. Romero with Guardado taking the day off. Woo! Fist pump. First save. Kelty, love you. Kind of a roller coaster final month for the Twins, who finished by winning five of six. White Sox finish at 81 up and 81 down. That he would not be managing next season. And it was in his decision to announce it before the game instead of waiting. Sammy comes out looking for 500. You got to get to 499 first. Oh, yeah. 3-2 count, breaking ball. Down. Down. Cubs go up 2-zip. Rain is passed, and I think we're looking at clear night ahead. Except Josh Fogg on the mound for the Pirates. Waveland Avenue, second at bat. Look at the atmosphere in Chicago. Yeehaw! Fantastic bat of the season for Sosa. Cubs are up 5-1. Fans have regathered on Waveland Avenue. How does that ball work? Nothing because he struck out. And get it this year. Stuck on 499. But what a season again for Sammy. Meantime, Kerry Wood. A lot of reasons to be excited about the Cubs next season. Wood is just one of them. Well, it takes you a couple years to come back from the surgery that he has had, and, and he is back. And Buck? I think he's going to have a huge year next year. And he's going to have to establish some things. I think it's getting that, like you said, Harold, out of his head, knowing, hey, I'm healthy. This is not going to crop up again. It's going to be a nice offseason for him mentally. 7-3, your final. Wood, six innings a run. He finishes with a record above 512 and 11. Pretty good season for Josh Fogg, who struggled down the stretch, ends up at 500. For the first time in five seasons, Sosa does not reach the 50 home run plateau. Brian Giles ends the season at 298, 38 home runs, 103 RBI. And if you're wondering where the Cubs open the season at next year, they open on the road. The schedule hasn't been released yet for the road, but they open on the road. Mound, Chipper Jones. Met defense, awful. 144 errors this season, a remarkable major league worst. Tell you, when it's contagious. You talk about hitting being contagious? Bad defense is contagious. Oh, you think you can have an off year defensively like you do offensively? No doubt about it. No You're doubt. Bobby Cox use Marquis Holmes, Remlinger, Mo Vaughn. That ain't coming back. Mo Vaughn getting big and heavy. 26 of the season, 2-1 Mets. Braves fourth pitcher, Damian Moss. Bottom five, two outs. Piazza, ouch. 33rd home run of the year. Look at Ned Pride on the final Sunday of the regular season. You've seen a lot of guys not accustomed to the role there. We saw that with Kurt Schilling. We've seen it now with Moss and Rumminger. These are them later in the game. Dabowski or starting in Moss's case. Leitenberg, Spoonie Barger. Joey Dolly comes in, the eighth and last pitcher. First major league appearance for him. Bobby V, Wigington, Valentin, Bro Gonzalez. Back to the benches. What's, what's going on here? Sneed. Dolly, Dolly. Clark Skitaro. Vance Wilson. Harold Reynolds. Suit, suit me up. Jason Phillips. In oh. I'm ready to play. It would have been a happy recap, but they paraded 45 players out there. And it's their worst season in six years for the Mets. They finished in last for the first time since 93. Mets. 144 errors and the disappointment of Alomar, Bernitz, and Vaughn are going to be.
Yeah, I do. I tell you what, I'd be a little worried. He's pushing so hard for this home run. I think he's looking forward to the postseason. Grounds out to third, 0 for 1. Third inning. The biggest thing is you don't want him to lose his swing yep. going through this trying to hit a home run because what happens when you hit home runs? Your swing gets a little bit, what? Longer. And that's the last thing he wants is a long swing. This was a glorified home run derby for him for the last five days. And you know about all the players who say that. A home run derby is great. It gets you in a groove, but it can get you out of one, too. Here he is with a six. The one two count. He went 0 for 4. Fifth at bat, though. This is what everybody wanted in the ninth and a six. No 40-40. Yanks still need the win. Everybody has told him after the game what a phenomenal season he had. Jeter comes out, high fives, and needs you in October. He had an unbelievable season. Let's keep it into perspective. Watch Rondell cape this ball. Woo! Mercy. Posing. you got to show us one time what's caping the ball means. All right, we'll do that on a breakdown one day. Prime dodge, a big caper. Giambi, 3-1. to one. That's a snap. 5-1. Yeah. That's a semi-caper, though. That's a snap dragon. A semi-caper. What you expected from Giambi. 41 homers. Yanks got him. 6-1, first and third. Some trouble here. But Ventura made a great play on Saturday, and he follows it up with just solid defense on Sunday. Some good all year. Yeah, the Yankees have had some real good defensive third baseman over the year. I tell you, Brosius and Ventura fit right into that mode with Cleet Boyer and that bunch and, and Greg Nettles. 40-40 thing was definitely weighing on Soriano's mind, who said after, quote, now I don't have to think about 40-40 all the time. I'm more relaxed now. Best record since 98 with 103 wins for the Yanks. They get home field throughout the postseason. 349 average wasn't in the starting lineup. He'd show up later. 10-8. Oh, they put a lot of runs on the board to the Red Sox. That's Jason Veritek, only his 10th home run of the year. Here's Manny, bottom seven. Woo! He walks. Staubach scores. Manny leaves the game. Ricky Henderson says it's Manny, right? Hey, Manny. Sox win 11-8. He finishes with a batting title at 349. 93 wins, not enough for the Red Sox. 106 losses, way too many for the Devil Rays. Somewhere. Vlade Dottie. Another chance for 40-40, and this is his first attempt. He hit it hard. Get up, get up, get up. Uh, wall ball double Saturday. He really came close to getting his 40th home run. I'll tell you, watching this game, Carl, I thought he might hurt himself swinging as hard as he was at this knuckleball. And I don't know if that was a plus or a positive, but you knew with the knuckleball he wasn't going to get cheated today. Probably a strike there, but he takes it anyway. Look at that hat. Take a look, look at that hat. I don't think he's trying to hit a single through the infield. Of course, he's looking for a knuckleball. 83-mile-an-hour fastball looks like it's 100 miles an hour. Last chance, bottom eight. He ain't going to walk. Ooh, he's he's not walking. walking. How about Alfonso Marquez with the appeal, though, and Frank Robinson says, come on. Don't you understand? We got, we got some 30,000 fans here tonight. Hands come down the field. Still, still, still uncalled for, especially the stuff we've been seeing, man. We talk about the players disrespecting the generation. What about the fans? Some of the stuff we see now. You're right. You're right. Third largest crowd of the year at Olympic Stadium. Maybe their last game in Montreal. They did finish with the team's best record since 96. We're not sure where the Expos will play. We do know that the Reds will have a new stadium next year. So as positives, that's certainly one of them. Well, I think the Reds have really got a nice upswing. A a a Dunn, Kearns, I think Griffey's getting healthy. I'd be a little worried, too, with the Expos when they're going to move. Whenever they do, you wonder what kind of club that's going to be when it does move. They do have a pretty good core now. Can they keep it together? Last game for Rock Rain. Second in the lineup for the Marlins. Swing, All and he checks, three. and he's out. Joe Roa punches. Bottom three, three, two, Phil. Second at bat for the Rock. Way to go, Timmy. Way to go. Right center field for a single, one for two on the afternoon. It's amazing what he's come back from lupus to get back on the field and play. Uh, I still think he's got a chance of Hall of Fame. He's put up some huge numbers over his 20 years. I heard a bird and a little bird to my ear saying it's a lot. One for three in his last ever game. Castillo. Johnny Estrada can't get him. You gotta understand how much this game meant to the Philadelphia Phillies. They win this game, they finish above 500. That was the play that hurt him right there. Yep. That one get past Estrada, Castillo and, goes to And third. the only reason being the catcher was up because Castillo had that threat to steal the base. That's why he did not get down to block it. Harold, you catch this ball? No, you got to let this ball drop right there because of the situation of the game. There's one out. You go ahead and try to make something happen with Castillo at third base. I was surprised to see him make the catch. It's a great catch, but I just think you got to let that ball fall. Reaction takes over. So the Marlins do prevent the Phillies from finishing 81 up.
1080 down. Instead, they're one game below 500. Are there positives to be found from these organizations? I think the Phillies are on, on the way. They got identified some good young pitchers, and that won't be playing anymore. Ernie Harwell will not be playing in any st stadiums near you. His journey is all over. Fans showing their support for him. In the bottom of the eighth of this game, Kinski drives the ball to the left. That scores Dave Berg. Jays went up by a score of 1-0 over the Tigers. It's Carlos Pena, though, here, as Ernie Harwell says so long. Pena digging in, waiting. Here's the set to pitch. Swing and a miss. And the Toronto Blue Jays will win it the final game of 2002. Now, I might have been a small part of your life, but you've been a very large part of mine. And it's my privilege and honor to share with you the greatest game of all. Now, God has a new adventure for me, and I'm ready to move on. So I leave you with a deep sense of appreciation for your long-time loyalty and support. I thank you very much, and God bless all of you. 55th season overall, doing baseball for Ernie Hartwell, 42 straight with the Tigers. Ernie's the best, man. I, I congratulate you on an incredible career, and what a class, man. But I tell you what, the, the things that he brought to the ballpark every day and his experiences, just, uh, I tell you, that's, that's emotional watching him. You know how much a game means to him. 44 and 32 since the All-Star break for the Blue Jays. That certainly is something that they can uh, hang their hat on for next season. Roy Halladay, what a great year he had from, from start to finish. And boy, they've made some real positive strides. They've identified what they have to do. Without him, says Eric Hinsky, we'd be nowhere. That's Halladay. Now the Royals and the Indians, Mike Sweeney. Effectively gave up the AL batting title to Manny. Well, he was, what, nine one points? One at bat and done. He was nine, nine points behind coming in. Well, he had, had a monster day. Yeah, about eight for eight. That Manny <laughs> goal for 11. Now a 2-1 game. Earl Snyder, left center. Man, that came in at 98, went out at 101. Back-to-back -back shots. Snidely whiplash. Bottom yeah. six. Uh-oh. Hats off to Jim Tober. In the right field, maybe his final game with the Indians, an RBI single. I, I just don't think so. I can't either. I, I can't see it, but you never know. I tell you what, he's got a nice uh, market out there waiting for him, though. Free agent Cleveland has the option, of course, to try to re-sign him. Travis Fryman, probably his last at bat for the Tribe. Doubles down the left field line, a couple of RBIs. And a good job by Joel Skinner. He says, Travis, you come on out. But Travis says... Appreciate it. I'm staying in. Well, it's been kind of sad, too, because Travis Fryman hasn't physically been able to show you the things that made him the great player that he was over the, over the years. Told me on the fans in Cleveland who've been outstanding over his tenure. Didn't take a day like this for me to recognize them. I've known for a long, long time. Royals make it a four-pack of 100 lost teams, most ever in a single season. But some positives for these two clubs.